We're gonna watch the boobies episode. I'm so excited. Okay, wait, we have to get past this ad. Everyone watch the ads. <laughs> it helps. It does. My very first question before we even jump in. Yeah. Did you apply to this or did we reach out to you? No, I applied. Oh, really? Yeah, isn't that, I know, shocking. I love I, that. I saw the word boobies. And, I and you're like, I'm in? <laughs> I just, I feel like it's such a good opportunity to one, have fun. You're talking about boobies. You're with the girls. Yeah. But also sneak in some deeper things around the topic. So Mm -hmm. I was like, I feel like this is a good outlet. This is my, this is where I shine. Yeah. Yeah. I was just curious if we like hit you up and we were like, hey, we're doing a boobies video. No, but y'all did hit me up the other day about a different one. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. You've seen this already? I did. I someone it sent out. it to me the day it came out. Of course. And I was just like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> here it is. <laughs> okay, let's begin. I have real boobs. 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 It's so dramatic. It's so dramatic. <laughs> The drama is unreal on this one. It's so dramatic. Look how serious you look. Like, why? Why is my game face? Because <laughs> you were born for this. It's you know it. <laughs> you know this is like what you were made for. Literally. So oh dramatic. God. If you would have asked me, like 12-year-old me, if what I ever she thought be doing I'd... now? <laughs> yeah, she'd be like, so fun. <laughs> Do you ever think about, I think about this a lot. Do you think like 12 year old you or 13 year old you would like you or like want to beat you up? I worry mine wants to beat me up. Why? I don't know. That's like, I can't imagine ever being mad at you. Oh, that's sweet. You're such a kind face. It's not punchable at all. <laughs> like 0%. Oh my God, wow. Thank you. Wow. No, I feel like 12, 13 year old me would like me. Yeah. Because I feel like I think about that a lot. And some, like, a lot of my followers are young women. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I want to be the, like, (laughs) how do I say this? I want to be, like, a big sister. Like, I want, it's like, I want to be a big sister to my inner child. Yeah. If that makes sense. And I keep that in mind when I'm doing things. Doing stuff, yeah. I don't know. I feel like it, it, I had a a rough go at 12 and 13. What were you like at 12? It's funny because I see a lot of comments about me and it kind of makes me laugh, but it also is like, oh, damn, like not accurate at all. Mm. That I look like a mean girl, that they think I would have been mean in high school, that I look like a bully. And Mm. like, sure, I do. Like, that's what I get cast for. Like, if you see like my acting work, yeah, I'm I'm a bitch. (laughs) Um, But I just have an RBF. I was so insecure, like so sensitive. I would try to like stand up for others. I wasn't. It was weird. I was like, I was liked, Mm -hmm. but I wasn't ever cool. I didn't ever feel cool. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I was very, very shy, which also doesn't really make sense with what I do. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. (laughs) But I think a lot of that makes sense when it's like, that's how you started. And like, this is what you're doing now. You know what I mean? It's like, it kind of, it, it's a bit of like a full circle moment. Um, in a way that I think is really nice. Yeah, and I think of it like this is Jess, like a persona of Jess, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, It's not like, I mean, you can never know someone from totally. a video, but it's it's me like being ridiculous. Yeah. And then there's like the parts of me that I keep like Yeah, hidden, yeah. The, little, the, the different parts. Yeah. Um, okay, fun. Are you ready? We're going to do it. Okay. Do a jumping jack. <laughs> right out the gate. My name is Lily and my titty. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, my name is Charisma. These are my boobs. Okay. I am really suspicious of Charisma. I feel like she did a little jump that was very confident, very buoyant. Is that the right word? <laughs> So they told me that we had to be careful about saying, like, titties. Yeah. And they were like, you need to say breasts. I'm like, what are, what are we, 80? Yeah. I'm like, nice breasts. Like, I don't know. It just sounded really clinical. Yeah. Um, so I was trying to think of words that weren't really buoyant. Buoyant. <laughs> buoyant. Um, 
But I, I was that. I was immediately suspicious of her because when I came into it, I was like, what am I going to look for? Mm-hmm. And as someone that has always had boobs, I always like everyone makes a comment too about this jacket. It's a safety uh, net. <laughs> Yeah, we have to get this out. We need to get it out. We We need to talk about it right away. We need to get it out. (laughs) The jacket is a safety blanket. It's a safety blanket. It's like one, it's like a booby guard if something, you know, someone's like looking a little weird. But it's like it belonged to someone special. And I just, I don't know. It's like my my buddy when I'm doing stuff where I might be nervous. (sighs) Um, But yeah, but I also like I typically do dress that way. And I, you know, I hunch and Mm. there's just things you do if you've always had boobs in my mind. And I was like, yeah. damn. And she was so, like, confident right away. And, like, she's like showing a good relationship yeah, with her boobies. With her boobies. <laughs> Which is beautiful. It is. It is. I, this actually, like, immediately gets me to one of my questions that I wrote down on my notebook. <laughs> the handy dandy notebook. <laughs> yeah. Because um, we've talked about, like, your style before and that you, you dress dummy mommy. Um, and you have just, like, a very, like, edgy style. And it got me thinking just related to this episode and with you like bringing this up too. It's like this kind of like security blanket with this jacket in particular. Do you feel like you're because I know you mentioned that like you developed breasts at like a pretty young age and that like is when you first kind of become aware of like the male gaze. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like, you know, your style can be perceived as like kind of edgy, a little like in your face, a little like not aggressive but kind of you know it's, <laughs> yeah. it's not the most like welcoming in a way do you know what I mean get away with from respect. me <laughs> respectfully no um, totally but it's like do you when did you kind of start dressing like this do you feel like this is was this ever kind of like um like a, a shield or like a protector or kind of a like once you developed because I, I know for myself when I developed I immediately got like really goth when I was like Mm. 13 and a lot of that is because I was like out in the world going to school by myself and it was like it was a way to keep people away from me and a way to be like kind of scary um, so that people wouldn't want to talk to me or wouldn't acknowledge like the way I looked so I'm just curious for you like when did you start dressing this way is there any sort of like protectiveness behind it 100 Mm percent it's it's really interesting that you picked up on that because i it's like i wouldn't think that people would be able to notice that (laughs) but they do um sorry just me (laughs) but yeah no i mean that's definitely why i have long hair it's like a blanket it's like a Mm -hmm. shield i wear a lot of chains i wear a lot of layers i don't know how deep you want to get but i'm okay with opening up about Mm -hmm. this so i'm in recovery from a very severe eating disorder Mm -hmm. and i think my style started around 16, kind of like just wanting to get away from my body mm. and being perceived that way. And I think it goes through phases. Like there's times where I only want to wear like baggy clothes or sweatpants. I just don't want to think about it. Yeah. I don't want that taking up so much of my brain. And I think now for me, it's a way of being like, this is under construction because Mm. I need to figure out how I feel about myself before I want your opinion on it. Mm. But it is like I got a septum ring and that was kind of like also like, you know, like a guard. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's so interesting that you picked up on that. Only because same. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But I, I, I mean, first of all, thank you for sharing and like being willing to talk about that kind of stuff, because I think that's really important, especially like you know, these kinds of videos, they can they can seem so frivolous and like we laugh because we're like, oh, my God, so dramatic right off the bat. But I think that like our bodies and the way they're perceived, like it, there's so much rooted in that, especially as women and oh, so yeah. much of this like feeling like so much of, of our bodies um, almost become like our currency in society yeah. and like what we value and all that jazz. So it's I. I was just curious because once you brought up in this video, like the the male gaze and the age that you guys noticed it and all that stuff, I immediately started thinking, I was like, oh, I wonder if this is part of the whole thing of like trying to protect yourself. Yeah, especially when you're in the when you put yourself out there totally in any way too, like whether you're acting or you're on the Internet or whatever, I feel like you have to come up with ways to kind of 
create a barrier. Yeah, protect yourself. Yeah, you got to keep things safe. Yeah, yeah. So definitely. <laughs> okay, well, we're 40 seconds in. <laughs> oh, we're so deep. <laughs> My name is Jess. My boobs. Oh. <laughs> so I purposely wore mm-hmm. a bodysuit under a bodysuit oh with a push-up bra. Jesus Christ. And I don't know why because – I don't know why I wanted them to look f- fake. fake. Yeah. yeah. I was like, why did I do that to myself? Because I was like, yeah. I had a wedgie the whole day. I was going to ask, were you able to breathe in that? Or no. like, no. no. <laughs> I think I said it in this video. I'm, I'm dead inside. I'm like, what's comfort? I don't, I don't know her. Oh, my um, God. But I did it. I don't know. I wanted to like, I didn't want it to be so obvious. Really? Yeah. You wanted to like play the game a little a bit? A little bit. I like that. That's kind of fun. <laughs> Coming out. Hello, Janice. Press. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Samiha. The biddies. <laughs> the biddies. Elizabeth, and these are my boobs. <laughs> I'm Ava. These are my titties. <laughs> I love the little bounce. Like when people walk out and just go, boop. <laughs> I think we just, whenever are you asked to do that? Yeah. Whose idea was that? Was it like any of you guys being like? I think it was y'all. <laughs> Oopsies. I think I think it was out. like, I don't know. It's like say your name, present your Breasts. tater tots. <laughs> yeah. Tater tots. Oh my god, I love it. Everyone has really nice boobs. I, <laughs> I love <laughs> boobs. I do. <laughs> what does everybody do for work? I'm a photographer and model. I work in tech. Okay. I don't work right now. Okay. <laughs> I'm a content creator. Nice. Good, okay, yeah. cool. Actor. Okay. Actor. Uh, cocktail and bottle service. Ooh. I'm a freelance entrepreneur. Wow. Okay, cool. cool, cool. Okay, boss ladies. I'm really suspicious of Ava right now because she said that she's a content creator and on my TikTok, I've been seeing a lot of like Filipino people just get a lot of boob jobs recently. I feel like she's the most. I'm curious how everyone's back pain is usually <laughs> terrible <laughs> terrible lower back pain terrible. i don't really have a lot to carry but like what i've noticed is that i would slouch no matter what yeah. just because like i don't know i'm shy mood <laughs> yeah that's exactly totally relate yeah for for her so the first person i was really suspicious of was charisma mm-hmm. just because she i mean she's a gorgeous girl yeah she's skinty yeah she's <laughs> cut yes yes those things are thinging yes um so that to me was kind of like mm, but and in her confidence mm-hmm. but ava was my second but it was only because of a specific experience that i had where i knew a girl that told me that she had a boob job mm-hmm. but her boobs were small mm. and it was like I, I just didn't even know that was a thing yeah like, yeah. cause I, you know, you just think stereotypically. Yeah. If you're paying that much, you you want. You're going big. Them. Go big or go yeah. home. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So that's why I was kind of like, hmm, maybe I just feel like you guys have tricks up your sleeves. Totally. So. Totally. <laughs> well, it's like what starts to happen with Odd One Out is like you have to, you know, when we started the show, we would cast people who, you know, would be the the opposite of what you would anticipate for this episode, Mm -hmm. right? It's like you would always cast someone who's like the last person you would think would make sense for this. And then we started having to do kind of like weird reverse psychology stuff internally too, (laughs) where we like, we'll we'll be like, okay, well then we, we have to cast the person who stereotypically people would not suspect, but they actually can't be the mole because then people will suspect them. So then we do want to... cast someone who stereotypically fits the it was it's beyond the jubilee people we have psycho. a room where there's red <laughs> red string yeah, so we go photos. full we go full like serial killer <laughs> not even kidding we like send we will like make the, way back in the day when the show first started we used to like put together like a google doc of pictures of everybody and then run around the office and be like who's the mole? If this is the episode, who do you think the mole is? And we still play that game to, like to this day when we're like finalizing casting. Did y'all get it? Actually, we didn't. This one specifically, we all in the room did not get it right. Okay, so then I don't feel dumb. Yeah, no, <laughs> great. But honestly, like when people talk about back pain, I'm like, because mm, maybe I'm just dead inside and I've always had it. How do you feel about sports bras? 
I don't know. They make my boobs look compressed. Yeah. I kind of like, like it. Like, yeah. I was going to say, I weirdly like it. I grew up Muslim, so we were kind of told to hide right. our boobs, yeah. unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So I'm actually used to sports bras. Yeah. So yeah. her take was really interesting, too. Yeah. And I never suspected her kind of for the same reason that someone talks about me. It's like there's like bo- what'd she say? Uh, booby baggage. Yeah, booby baggage. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I loved that. It's like she you could just tell she's had to work on her relationship with yeah, with her body. Her yeah. Yeah. So that was interesting. Yeah, I really liked her take. Yeah, I thought that was really I loved that she was in this episode because I agree. It was just like a an insight that I don't think about very often. Right. It's like we kind of – we have the luxury of not worrying about that, but then also there's all these other things that come with like the expectation to like flaunt your chest and then mm-hmm. not wanting to do that and blah, 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 blah mm-hmm. spirals. Um, but you asked the question about sports bras specifically. Mm-hmm. Like what was the – what was like the – insight behind that why were you asking that question specifically because so sports bras a lot of the girls they're like i like that feeling which Mm -hmm. is true i I do like feeling compressed but with that comes the uniboob where you just have literally one front boob it reminds me of like leela from futurama's eyeball (laughs) (laughs) that was too specific ew i'm gonna think about that every time now (laughs) it's just like one massive yes. booby. Um, I was thinking about that, but also boob sweat. So I was seeing mm-hmm. who was going to be like, mm, maybe mm-hmm. spiraling to say those things. That's true. Yeah. Boob sweat didn't really come up in this episode. Which is shocking. Really shocking. But also maybe we didn't want to call it out. It was hot in there. Yeah. That's probably why. Because <laughs> you guys didn't want to draw attention to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. My boobs are the first things to go if I'm hot. First things to start that and like my upper lip. Yes, yes. so annoying. Yeah, I grew up doing sports a lot, soccer, and you don't want them to like jump up and down. It's like I needed something tight to kind of hold them. Yes, everybody knows the booby struggles. This is hard. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, I would think charisma too, just because she's like her frame is so little. Yeah, she's petite. She's so petite, and then to have boobs that size on such a tiny frame, it just like goes against what I've. She hit come to understand the genetic lottery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. That's is, actually what it is. It is like good for her. It is rare though, because I feel like when you do have larger breasts, you tend to have like a softer tummy or like yeah. bigger hips. More kind of like on the like curvy, yeah. voluptuous side. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to talk about this. I hate that word. Actually. I know. I don't like, voluptuous. I don't know why I said that. I feel like an eighty-year-old woman. <laughs> it's like <laughs> we, we just ate ourselves. Uh, I've shot a lot of girls that have had like breast augmentations. Even with bras on, they tend to have like a little separation between mm. their cleavage. Mm. That is why I'm a little suspect of Ava and Charisma. Same peeps. That's interesting. I remember growing up and thinking the opposite. I always thought that like you could tell if someone had fake boobs because they always had like perfect cleavage. But I think it's also because, like, I grew up thinking when I was, like, a little girl, I totally thought that, like, you were just supposed to have cleavage all the time. Like, I thought, like, when you took your shirt off, like, women (laughs) still had cleavage. Could you imagine? And I was so worried as I was, like, developing because I was, like, am I wrong because mine don't do that all the time? I know it's really sad. But I just think there's so many weird misconceptions about, like, what boobs are. (laughs) Yeah. What they're supposed to look like. Yeah. And what the, like, assumptions are about them. I just feel like there's, like, there's not a lot of science. No, and it's, like, they're all different. So different. That's what was interesting to see what was similar and what was different. Mm. It it was really interesting to hear. What were you, like, the most surprised by? I think Ava talking about, like, her areolas. By the way, areola is a beautiful word. Like, if you didn't know what it was, it would be a nice name. It would be an amazing name. Same yeah. with, like, chlamydia. It's gorgeous. Oh, my God. <laughs> I disagree on that one. <laughs> I disagree on that one. <laughs> I think it's a pretty word. Yeah. Not a pretty thing, but a pretty word. <laughs> oh, God. I do agree with areola, though. Yeah. That's Diarrhea. <laughs> You're losing me. I want to be on your side so bad. So <laughs> I want to be on your side so bad. <laughs> What age would you guys say you were when you first noticed the male gaze? Mm. Oh. Is that, is that too deep? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> just, like, across the room, yeah, everyone's just... like, oh. 
bummer. <laughs> we knew it was coming, but ah, uh, bummer. Well, it was, it was funny because um, they were like, don't get too deep the first round. <laughs> and you were like <laughs> going in swinging. Dope. <laughs> Honestly, though, it's like if the the round started with like everyone like, presenting their boobs it's kind of like i want the i want the duality yes. like immediately please yeah, yeah you gotta add some of that you have to have something yeah i was yeah. like in middle school i grew yeah. up in norway and i feel like it was a little different there because i don't know i just i felt it more when i moved to the u.s i was like yeah Ooh. yeah yeah. I, was gonna say <laughs> yeah I definitely feel like it was like yeah, exactly. puberty like when my body started developing and like when i started growing boobs going into high school kind of like yeah. that's when i realized so with that question i'm curious when did you first start noticing the male gaze for you so ooh, so i noticed it wow that's always the reaction to that question you can't help it it's yeah like, you literally ooh. can't yeah <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it, it just <laughs> is i remember being so young like i'm talking like six or seven because i mm. modeled when i was a little little girl mm. and i remember my mom talking to me about it like just Interesting. wanting me to be aware of being safe and stranger danger and stuff. And so I think that kind of made me be like, oh, like mm. not everyone's a safe person, I guess. Yeah. Um, I remember it really young, but I think it wasn't, I wasn't feeling it on my own until probably 12. Mm. And especially like shopping for bras and stuff and just, you know, like you are curious and you start thinking about being a woman and like mm -hmm. how much of that is for other people versus yourself and you being comfortable. Yeah. So I yeah. would say probably like those two ages. Is that when you started developing too? It was like around like 12. Yeah. yeah. I, I, uh, it was like crazy. I just remember overnight just having boobs all of a sudden and it was like, I couldn't wear the cute little training bras that everyone had. Yeah. You know the one, the cotton one with the yeah. little flower? The little flower in the middle. No, I had to go with my aunt to like JC Penney's or like a department store and like try on bras. And then I wanted the cute Demi cup one. Yeah. But then she was like, no, like you need the full coverage and like just being really confused by it yeah. and like feeling different. Yeah. And all of a sudden like, ew, I have to like – yeah deal with these yeah I ask for this <laughs> did your did you have any other like any friends at that age who were also developing or were you kind of one of the like first ones I mean I feel like people had like you know like little budding boobies and mine were just like hello yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel yeah. like puberty hit me like a truck <laughs> yes <laughs> like I don't know why and it was like all of a sudden you know it's like I have hips and I have like armpit hair and then I just started wearing sweatshirts mm. all year round. Mm. Like I would go to Aeropostale <laughs> and get nice. their sweatshirts and I would wear them in the summer. Mm. I would just wear them all the time because I was like, I don't know how to deal with this. Yeah. Yeah. Very much like a, it's interesting because I think there's so much like perceived joy around like puberty it's like oh my god you're about to become a woman or this or that or whatever but it's like there's not really this there's so much like a loss of innocence there and I think even as children like we don't really totally know all the bits and bobs of what's going on totally. and you know it it can make sense as a kid that you're like kind of grieving your childhood when yeah. this happens because it's like suddenly adults are saying like well, now you have to do this, and now you have to pay attention to this. And it can make you feel so, I think, like, othered because you you just assume no one else is experiencing this. Yeah, you and know? you have the brain – I think people don't realize it's like I have the brain of a 12-year-old and yeah. maybe the body of someone that looked 16, 17. Yeah. It's, and it's like your brain is still playing with Barbies, yeah. and yet all of a sudden you have to think about – yeah. what you're wearing and like if I wore a tank top in school I would get in trouble versus someone else wouldn't and it makes you feel very singled out yeah but I never I had the experience you're talking about growing into a woman which makes me sad and I think that's why I've really had to work on my relationship with myself and as a woman mm -hmm. um it never felt exciting like, mm. even the day I got my period was, like, a dramatic day. Oh, my God, same. <laughs> my brother broke his leg sledding, and I was home alone with him. And I had to, like, call 911, and then I got my period, and it was really dramatic. 
oh no like it never was exciting to yeah. be like i'm a woman now like i see it yeah. in movies and i'm like what's that like yeah i got my period really young i was in like fifth grade or something i was still in ele- elementary school oh. and i got my boobs really young too so i mm-hmm. started getting boobs in like fifth grade um and i remember it was like not like a good thing because it was like oh you're the first girl to get boobs in like our class and it's like it turned into a weird just vibe and then I got my period and I remember being in the bathroom of my elementary school being like oh my god I just got my period and I had a friend who was in the bathroom with me and I was like I think this is what I just got and she was like ew Mm. and I was like oh okay bummer so it was immediately like a sad thing or it was immediately a gross thing Mm -hmm. and I think when you're when you're at that age like it's just so fragile yeah it's like the dumbest little things stick with you forever it, like, oh my god the core memories oh my god we so like, dumb why <laughs> yeah i'm like so dumb <laughs> but yeah i think that there's just there's something so crazy about that moment in your life when you start developing and it, through no fault of like your own or our own mm-hmm. all the baggage that comes with it i feel like is so much more like it's society placing this baggage on us it's like oh you're a woman now like you well, gotta even like your friend saying ew it's like did i don't think she actually felt that way she doesn't no, know no but totally that was what she thought the response it was should supposed be. to be yeah. yeah going into freshman year i literally all middle school i had nothing got my period that summer and then my boobs appeared definitely like the seventh grade <laughs> yeah. i was like crop top queen at that point i was like Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> around fourth grade because i think that's also when i got my period so and i've been the same that's cup young. size since then too so yeah that's younger than most people I feel yeah like. that's that's early that's got to be hard for her too specifically just thinking about what her experience was and that feeling of like having to cover up and like yeah. it being so shameful to then also be so young when you hit that right. I mean you don't even get proper sex ed until like middle school ever. or high school or <laughs> ever, ever. <laughs> um and I feel like the first few things they teach you is just like nothing I feel like it's nothing frankly how do you feel like your just like the topic of like sex ed was handled in your school or growing up or even at mm. home. Like, did you feel like you had a solid understanding? My mom, I don't know if people can relate to this. My mom gave me that book. It's the girl with the cartoon and she's in the towel. Do you yes, remember that I totally book? I feel like everyone that had that everyone book. Everyone had that book. She gave me that book. And then in school, I feel like, so our sex ed was co-ed and I felt the whole time I was trying to, like, not be embarrassed because there were boys in the class. Yeah. So I was, like, kind of playing along. I definitely was, like, a goober, like a goofball. <laughs> and, like, you know, and guys are like, Ew, like you know, they make you watch, like, the birth video. And they're like, yes. the baby's coming out. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's so gross. Yeah. Because, like, I don't want to be, like, yeah, the weird, you know. Yeah. The, but I wish, I maybe wish they would have approached it in a different way. Mm-hmm. And I think the vibe, too, it's, like, no, this is serious. It's not, I mean, not like clinical, but. Yeah, it's not like, not the vibe of like, you're going to have sex and die kind of thing, but yeah. it's like. But it's science. Yeah, and being it's like, this isn't weird. Like, this yeah. is what everyone goes through. This is what like, you know, whatever. Yeah. It just, it drives me crazy that there isn't a more solid understanding around that. And yeah. to this day, just as I'm like thinking about my own, like, wellness and health and whatever just being like wow this i just feel like we did not figure this shit out i think i was like 13 but they weren't super big back then then i took birth control when i was i think 17 yeah. and then i kind of grew a little bit more and i was like nice <laughs> <laughs> around 12 13 as well um yeah. but yeah it's been the same i think it's like maybe my birth control or just hormones that sometimes you know they're a little bit voluptuous but most of the time you know they're yeah. a little tiny and just need a lot of push-up yeah for sure um <laughs> I have a question. Uh, I like that the birth control thing came up because that also is tied to that, like, the science around boobs and how, like, Mm -hmm. there just isn't enough, I don't know, like, understanding of hormones and boobs and how our bodies work and what the effect of, like, birth control potentially is. Yeah, I've heard crazy things about, I mean, there's, it hasn't gotten better. No. Like, even from when we were younger. It's like, it just... These are your options. Figure it out. Yeah. 
And I'm pretty sure, like, the actual birth control pill has not, like, changed at all since, like, the first one came out. It's been, like, the same kind of hormones and shit. Um, I just think it's so wild. Like, you get put on it so young. Mm -hmm. And the assumption is, like, oh, this is going to be good for you. And I just feel like now I'm dealing with so many friends or, like, contemporaries who are, like, now they want to get pregnant or now they want to see what their body is going to be like. And it's, like, you've spent so much time being on these hormones that you have no fucking idea what your body is like anymore. Yep. It's just wild. And I feel like they don't talk enough about how they affect your, like, mood and mental health. Oh, my God. Yes. I remember when I was – I think I was 16, I tried a birth control pill and it made me literally insane. Yes. Like, mood swings. Like, I was so angry. Yes. And I had to go off of it and, like, look at other options. But all the other options are bleak, too. And I was just like, oh, God. It's so this true. Is, I'm like, this is terrible. Yeah, there's, like, a weird lack of understanding between, like, hormones and, like, mental health and, like, how that would affect you, you know? When like, they, And they those feelings feel so real. Yeah. You know, like, when, you, when you're – having a mood swing and sometimes like when you're pmsing or whatever you can be like oh you know i'm cr- like i cried at like the movie ice age and yeah. i was like oh, i'm pmsing <laughs> <laughs> I love that. but like in most cases you don't realize and then you're yeah. just like oh my god i'm so upset yeah it's true i it's i just feel like there's such a like lack of knowledge around all of that and like the tie between the two yeah so, i'm agreed. glad someone brought that up yeah She's an actor, and I used to act, so I'm like, girl, you are delivering wines right now. That surprised me. Really? Yes. One, one, I'm like, oh my god, thank you. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Truly, I was like, whoa, it's kind of like flattering. Really? (laughs) Yeah. Oh my god, that's really funny. And then the fact that she was like so sus of me because I'm an actor, I'm like, I, I feel like that's the biggest misconception with actors, and yeah. I don't know if it's just me, but most actors that I've met were not good liars because it's <laughs> me lying. Yeah. It's not, you know, this girl Penelope in this movie yeah. lying. It's yeah. like, because that's not real. Yeah. Well, I'm a terrible liar. That's really funny. <laughs> I have anxiety. But also, you did wear, what, two bodysuits and a push-up True. bra. True. So you kind of went into it wanting a little bit of this, so. I just, I wanted to be in the game. I didn't want them to be like, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> It's the look, and also she was a little too quiet. They're just perfect. (laughs) Like, they're perfect boobies. (laughs) Not wrong. Did I lie? No. I wasn't really talking too much, and probably my job maybe made people suspicious. But you know, I'll I'll take it as a compliment. Well, I was oh gonna ask God. you guys, um, like, how is your like boob pain like when your period is about to come on? I'm tender. Like, I'm tender. Yeah, yeah tender. like it, it hurts yeah. if I bump into something. Yeah. It's just really bad. Yeah, even it's like true. weighing down. No, I was like, oh, that's that's I, this question made me suspicious of her. The girl asking it, Lily. Yeah, I, I don't same, and it was weird because I didn't suspect her at all yeah but i think she was nervous it was the way she asked it yeah that may yeah and also it could be that for some reason boob pain sounds really silly yeah 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 How it's true boob pain, How's your boob pain? <laughs> it, it almost was like to me it, it's probably to your point like a nervousness or something and how she asked it because to me i was like it sounds like if a guy was trying to make conversation with women about their boobs and being like how is your bo- how is the boob pain? Totally. <laughs> there would be like, excuse me? 100%. So it's probably the nervousness, but it's like the way she said it, I immediately was like, oh, it's her. <laughs> I have no idea why. Yeah, why did she say it like that? Elizabeth was really quiet, and I noticed she also waited till other people answered, but so did Ava. Yeah, yeah it's swollen, like the nipples, like no matter how easy I touch my nipples, I'm just like, no. Okay. How do you feel about walking down the stairs? I look so oh, sus like, now. <laughs> Why the walking down the stairs question? That's a big question. Yeah. Because whenever you walk down the stairs, mm-hmm. do you not do that? Not always, no. Really? Yeah. You just let them ba doing da doing da doing? Yeah, I guess I do. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure sometimes I do. 
but I guess I don't really pay attention to what they're doing when I go down the stairs. Now you're now you're going to. I'm going to. <laughs> I'm also not, like, running down the stairs. Yeah. Maybe I'm just, like, a real slow <laughs> stair person. Just taking your just, time. Just, like, giving my time. The yeah. wind is blowing. Yeah, in a music like, video. enjoying my life. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I wanted to ask because I was, like, I was, like, interesting. Like, mm. let's see what some of these people have to say. And I was starting to get suspicious because Elizabeth and Ava were talking yeah. after others. And I thought Elizabeth was doing it because she is from Norway. Mm, mm-hmm. But Ava, I was like, why? Why are I you just waiting? Yeah. Got like really sus. I don't know why. But people were like suspicious of her from the get go too. Yeah. And some of her answers were a little like the areolas thing or the the nipples thing. She talks about areolas next, but the nipples thing about like, oh yeah, they're so sore when you have your period. I was like, and she said like, no matter how lightly I touch them or something. And I was like, I think it was the wording. Yeah, it was the wording. I was like, <laughs> what? question of walking down the stairs and she was like oh i go crazy girl that didn't make sense so i definitely <laughs> think it's her i take my time and if i'm running yeah. down like i'm obviously that tight hug you're just yeah like, mm. or like holding it just while yeah. I'm walking down my mm-hmm. building has an elevator so this is a kind of supportive yeah. so and i don't have, don't have like biggest boobs that would jump yeah do you think there's a stigma about fake breasts People think you're vapid if you're getting your, or like self-indulged if you're getting like any work done, not just like your breasts done, but any work in general. Which is unfortunate because at the end, like your autonomy is your autonomy. And if you have the money and if you have the bread, yeah, go, go get new boobs, go get that eyebrow. Like, so Mm -hmm. it. Go get that new eyebrow. Is that a thing? I think like the eyebrow lifts and shit. Okay. There's like that. Like, like, can you just go get get a new eyebrow? (laughs) I think that stigma is going more toward the younger generation. Yeah. Which yeah. is unfortunate. Yeah. Did you guys watch the Barbie movie yet? <laughs> Good transition. I just liked how like in, in thoughtful a lot of your questions were. Thank you. What is kind of like your take on, you know, plastic surgery or getting work done or anything like that? Like, mm. I'm really conflicted because yeah. I feel like you should have bodily autonomy and you should do you and I feel like I don't know like when people like for example like when people shit on lip filler yeah like if I like what an asshole am I because I have bigger lips naturally and it's like if I didn't and I was insecure about it yeah and I had the money to do so like yeah Yeah. I probably would go get those done um I just hate that we feel like we need to yes that's what I hate like even I find myself like, I want to be a mom one day. Yeah. And like, I remember I was talking to someone about it and I was like, if I have kids one day, but I'm going to make my partner get me a mommy makeover. And I'm like, that's, that's sad. Yeah. Like, oh my God, you just baked a whole human. And all you're thinking about is, oh, Um, how am I going to bounce back? Yeah. How am I going to get, and it's like, I feel like it's so ingrained in us. Yes. It sucks. So I'm really conflicted because again, like I don't want like younger women or women in general to feel like they need it or like mm-hmm. shit about themselves or go into debt over it. I mean, those surgeries are really expensive. Yeah. But at the same time, like you do you. Yeah. I don't know how to fix that problem. Yeah. I, I a hundred percent agree with you. I think that that's like my biggest thing. It's like bodily autonomy is so important, right? Like that's first and foremost to mm-hmm. me. So I'm like in, in that sense, I'm like, yes, whatever you want to do, go do it. And then I think so much, same as you, about, like, what is the intention, though? Like, yes, I want to be confident. Yes, I want, you know, if if this thing will make you feel better, if this is one thing that's bugged you forever and you want to go fix it, then, like, go do it. Why not? If you have the ability, you have access to it. But then it's a matter of, like, where is that coming from, though? Yeah. Why do you feel like you need that? Is it yeah. because you feel, like... And this is coming from a person who, like, has gotten stuff done and, like, has thought really, you know, frequently about this. Like, is the intention, the underlying feeling that, like, my only currency in the world is, like, desirability Mm -hmm. or, like, appearance? And, like, is that what I've been brought up to think that, like, is the most valuable thing I can offer to the world. So I'm going to invest in that more. I just think that it's so 
like I agree with you. I'm I'm in this place in my life where I'm thinking so much about that of mm-hmm. like, yes, I have the resources, I have the access, but why? Yes, that'll make me feel better or make me more confident or, you know, I'll love myself more if that happens or if I, you know, look in the mirror and I'm like, ooh, she's fun. But where is that coming from? Right, and for who? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a really tough one. And I feel like, too, like – with social media and filters and Facetune and celebrities, it's like, again, you do you. Yeah. But I feel like, like even now when I film a TikTok, I'll be less confident if I don't have a filter on, and it yeah. makes me feel sad. Yeah, like I just, you know, it's like we're told to love ourselves, but only when it's like there's so many conditions. Yeah. It's like love yourself, and it's like, but only if you're healthy and fit. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What do you feel – I'm just curious because you are, like, you're on the internet. You're a person on the internet, as most of us are. But, like, you are on the internet um, and you're also an actor. Mm-hmm. What kind of pressures have you experienced in terms of, like, your appearance? You know, is that something that you've struggled with? I know even just, like, your background now, knowing what you've kind of dealt with, mm-hmm. how do you, like, sort of – rectify all of that for yourself what are some of the issues you've run into oh my gosh so I get asked a lot by Mm -hmm. people in my dms whenever like how do I become a model how do I become an actor and for me I started modeling when I was really young um I model for textbooks and t-shirt lines and all that stuff and then puberty hit and I got real awkward Mm -hmm. I got you know I have frizzy curly hair actually my hair is really curly uh, braces, glasses. I was a little gained some weight, and I had the boobs, and I was just like, "What is going on?" <laughs> so I stopped modeling, and then I didn't get tall. And in my mind, you're supposed to be tall and skinny and beautiful and perfect yeah. and fit. So I was like, "Oh, I could never model." Yeah. So um, I started to act to kind of get out of my shell because I have really bad anxiety. I never did theater, which is weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I only ever did film. Um, and then I kind of fell back into modeling, and I was. I felt like I was always running uphill because mm. I was short. So I had to, I thought, well, if I'm really skinny, then I'll look tall on camera. If I'm really fit, if I'm really this or that, then I can be like everyone else at the baseline level. And mm. it was like an impossible standard. And things have definitely changed. They're starting to change, which is great. Yeah. But the fact that I couldn't do my job without – torturing myself or torturing my body is insane so then when I started to get healthier because I like I almost died like I I couldn't do it anymore and I was like I don't know if I can do my job in a healthy way Mm. so for me a a lot of work has been figuring out what actually makes me happy and not doing things for money or because I'm supposed to, but actually taking jobs that feel good. Mm. And now I just let my body do what it wants to do. And there are days where I hate it. I feel Mm -hmm. like I want to pull my skin off. I want to wear baggy clothes and stay inside. And then there's days where I feel cute. And it's like every day is different. And I realize that my brain is just wired to really attach my emotions to my body, unfortunately. Mm. Um, like, if I'm upset, then I'm ugly that day. If I'm happy or having a good day, then I feel pretty. It's yeah. really interesting how yeah. that works. And I'm aware of it so I can, like, check myself and stuff. But it's it's definitely a journey. There's – I don't know – I think there was a bit of pressure put on me, but I think I also put a lot of pressure on myself. Yeah. It's, like, it's like when you make a joke about yourself – and you beat someone to the punchline. Yeah. If I fix the thing or I'm aware of the thing, mm-hmm. then you can't say it and make me feel bad. Yeah. Because then you're an asshole. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I called it out first. So yeah. I think I was always trying to be ahead of it so it would never come up. Yeah. And it's just not sustainable. Yeah. It's wild. I think that makes a lot of sense. What, you know, obviously this is like an ongoing thing and and it's something that you'll you'll probably always be kind of like working on and it ebbs and flows. What sort of advice would you give to, you know, maybe a young girl who's like going through that right now or who wants to act or wants to be online, wants to, you know, do some of this fun stuff that that they would legitimately find, you know, like creatively fulfilling. um, 
but there's that fear of like placing so much value on on your appearance and yeah. getting lost in that sauce so to speak like what is what are some things that have worked for you to help you get out of that and like what kind of advice would you give I mean first things first in an industry or online or in acting or modeling music whatever it is with so many people telling you who to be you need to have a strong sense of self Mm -hmm. you to a core and keep those things protected like I said Mm -hmm. it's like that's a persona and like little Jess is like safe inside in there um so therapy 100 percent um I would say also hold on let me gather my thoughts I'm like there's so many things I know sorry (laughs) Um, you thought this was just about boobies. I know, I but I love how deep this is getting because it's so real, and I feel like I feel like I don't get a lot of outlets to share this about myself, and yeah. I, I honestly was never that open about it until the past couple of years because I realized that I'm not alone. You know, yeah. it's like you really only are as sick as your secrets, and I'm telling mm-hmm. you, like, if you guys go into this industry, like. It will not fix your secrets. It will not fix your self-worth. It will never be enough to make it. it, It's like you're chasing a thing to fix it. It it will never. And all those things that you're hiding or keeping, they're just going to get like exacerbated. Like they're just going to grow and grow and fester. So it's like you have to take care of it. And I think Mm -hmm. another thing is my superpower. It could be a terrible thing, but I maybe turned it into a superpower is that I do have insanely, like, bad body dysmorphia. Mm. Um, I don't really know what I look like. Like, I do, I guess, objectively. Yeah. But when I see myself on camera, I'm able to look at that and go, oh, like, that's funny. That looks nice. That's cool. Yeah. I'm not critiquing myself because that's not what I look like in my head, if that makes sense. Mm. And I don't have any like full length mirrors in my house. Um, If I want to like check an outfit, I will do like a little video where like I do a lot of TikTok get readies and it's not to body check. It's just to like, oh, this outfit is cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's maybe also why my style is a little weird because I'm just like, (laughs) this feels good. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Which is how it should be. Yeah. But that's definitely some tips that I use. I mean, like the mirror, the body checking, it gets crazy. Yeah. You know, and that, that is just something that's helped me is just avoiding the mirror. Mm. It's just like, it's so easy to get wrapped up in yourself and like have your head up your ass. So I feel like that's 100%. a way of pulling it out. 100%. And like, just chill. You're fine. You know. Mm-hmm. There was this thing I read recently about that show, like Daisy Jones and the Six and how like shows and movies these days, it's so hard for it to be believable that it's like a, a different generation or a different Mm. point in time because you can so it's so easy to tell that it's modern because like their faces are all really perfect or they have had a ton of Botox or their teeth are perfect or all the it's like it's and I I think the article I read called it like selfie face it's because we're all so hyper aware of what we look like Mm -hmm. um do you think there's a a way to like exist online and not like kind of succumb to all of that I don't know I feel like it's really hard not to be like a little bit like a pick me ass bitch because it's like (laughs) I don't use filters hashtag no filter like I'm not like other girls yeah it's really hard because again do what makes you feel good but I I think maybe what would help is being honest about it Mm. but then I'm like we don't owe people anything exactly but I feel like I feel like when you have a platform of any in, of any size, right? Yeah. Like people are looking to you for advice or what to buy or how to be. Mm-hmm. I feel like you do have a responsibility. Totally. So like, for example, I have veneers mm-hmm. on my top six teeth and I had to get them because, you know, my teeth were damaged of all the abuse <laughs> that I put my body through. And, you mm-hmm. know, I have people ask me like, and it makes me feel bad and I don't owe them anything. Yeah. But, I share it because people will be like, oh, my God, I just see you drinking, like, red wine and coffee and, like, your teeth are perfect. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I got them done. Like, you can't, yeah, you know, it's not a whitening product or something, you know. And then I – but then I also tell people, like, don't just go and do that because it's the point of no return. Like, I try to tell them also, like, the pros and cons of it. But I feel like that's something that I do to help combat that. Yeah. 
because I feel okay if it's like I'm offering up the information and I don't feel like I owe it to someone. Yeah. But it's a sticky situation. It's a very fine line because then it's like, well, do we have to like tell everyone everything? So, yeah. you know, it's weird. That's so interesting. I have to tell you, I every time we talk, I look at your teeth because I'm just <laughs> like, God, she has such a perfect smile. And I'm so insecure about my smile. So every single time I'll like look at your teeth and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so jealous. I want my teeth to look like that. Mm-hmm. So then to hear that like they're veneers and the reason why mm-hmm. you had to get them is really like just like a very humbling moment for me I think too in this moment yeah, of being really like beautiful. well it's just like I I'm like well I don't I wouldn't I don't envy that experience mm-hmm. do you know what I mean mm-hmm. like I don't I don't I can't look at you and be like oh I god I wish I had those teeth oh I wish I had that smile because of you know my insecurities now knowing more about what got you there mm-hmm. it is a little more like oh well I wouldn't like I I wouldn't want to you know yeah and I, I wouldn't wish that experience on my worst yeah, enemy. Yeah. I think it I think that is definitely a big lesson of like we never know what people are going through. So true. Yeah. And because of my experience and just kind of it's like the Wizard of Oz, like I've seen behind the yeah. curtain. When I see someone that is posting videos like body I mean, it's body checking or yeah. like they're working out a lot and stuff like my spidey senses go up because I can feel compassion for them. And I and I and maybe that's me making an assumption, but usually I can clock it and I'm like, oh, someone else might look at this and go, oh, my God, I wish I looked like her. I wish I was that skinny or that fit. And in my head, I'm like, she's probably torturing herself and she doesn't feel good enough. And mm. this is how she's controlling that, you know? Yeah. I think I'm able to look at it that way. But I know that a lot of people maybe, you know, they, they maybe don't think of that at first yeah like it's easy to take it for face value and be like oh I'm so jealous of this person they they do this they look this way but we Mm -hmm. have no idea what led to that moment we don't know or what's going on behind closed doors yeah I think that's really interesting some of the most attractive people are the most insecure or most like tortured like they are so mean to themselves no it's so true I think about this a lot like Especially right now, I'm getting married in October, and there's a thank you. There's a lot of pressure around that to like look your best at your wedding and be like your goal weight and Mm -hmm. be. There's just so much that goes into that industry, and like the assumption of like, if you're getting married, you should look your absolute best you've ever looked in your life, and there's and that's like really difficult. Similarly to you, of like someone who like struggles to feel connected to their body or Mm -hmm. feel yeah I just I'm very disconnected to my physical being I understand (laughs) you know what I mean yes Um, I do (laughs) so it's really hard to like be knowing that I'm heading towards this this event in my life where so much of my appearance is going to be like like the core of it as much as I don't want that to be the truth and so I think a lot about like weight and and you know where I'm at now versus like where I want to be, where I had hoped I would be. Mm-hmm. And I always think back of like, oh man, my goal weight when I was like my skinniest. I'm like, God, I wish I could be that again. And I think back, I'm like, I was the most depressed in my whole life. Mm-hmm. I was going through awful shit mm-hmm. and I was miserable. Mm-hmm. And that's why I looked that way. And now it's like, oh, the reason you don't look that way anymore is because like, you're happy. Mm-hmm. You're not as anxious. You're on Zoloft. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> and like you're comfortable and like feel safe in your life. Mm-hmm. So you're able to like feel comfortable eating and like just living your life and you're not starving yourself or exactly. drinking heavily or like doing drugs or doing all these things to get through the other shit that's happening. Mm-hmm. So I do think it's just very interesting to like pull that curtain back when mm-hmm. you can. Yes, of course. Yeah. And you hear that a lot, too, about weddings is um, I've heard a few people say, like, oh, well, I didn't eat the whole day and I was just, like, miserable or thinking about this and that instead of just being present. Just being present. And I would rather be a little squishy or a little whatever and be alive and present than be a shell. No, that's a hundred. That's what I'm going for. I love how deep this has gotten (laughs) over a booby video. but no, it's so not even seven minutes it's in. so true though and i just i love talking to you so. 
whoopsies. <laughs> I feel like you're – because I've seen you with a bunch of different people, right? Mm-hmm. And everyone's different and strange. <laughs> and I feel like you allow them to be highlighted. Like you're an amazing support where you're mm-hmm. – how to explain it? It's like a, a reader. Like when I'm doing a self-tape and you have a good reader, they're making you – your best self well and I think that that's why I love doing these videos too the after bit you know because it's like this is the entertainment this is what you know this is how we're getting people in the door I always say like hide your vegetables so it's like you Trojan horse them a little bit 100 percent yeah I I am so happy to use my boobies for that reason (laughs) I'm like (laughs) come for the jiggles stay for the thoughts Like, way to use Holy them shit. for good. Wow. <laughs> and That's evil. That's great. I want that to be our tagline. Come for the jiggles. <laughs> stay for the thoughts. Anything you do as a woman, you will always be judged by either for one reason or the other. Yeah, yes. that's true. Mm-hmm. Especially where I come from, too. It's like, if you get boob surgery, they think you're, like, trying to be, like, a porn star or something. That's, like, yeah. the stereotype. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, yeah. people get it. Like, you could have cancer and want to get it. Like, there's yeah. a lot of reasons. Yeah. That's when I started suspecting her. Really? Yeah, because I thought... Hmm, what would Jubilee do? I bet you they would bring a cancer survivor in oh my God. <laughs> to teach us all. To There's teach other us reasons. <laughs> yeah, like Jubilee is like the the like cool teacher that comes and sits with the chair backwards. <laughs> Stop. That's literally how we like talk about ourselves. Stop. And I'm not even joking. It's accurate. We. I'm not even joking. We like our brand team is like we are the cool teacher in college who like you want to hang out with. And, yeah. Like yeah. It, no, it's accurate. <laughs> so I thought like, damn, they would they would do that. What I love though is this like, I think that the assumption is that like Americans are very like superficial and vain mm-hmm. and. I like that we played with this idea of, like, someone coming from a country that is also, like, isn't it, like, the happiest country in the world? Is Norway? it? I think it is. It's, like, one of the... I'm going there. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, one of, like, the people are the happiest and all this stuff. So to have someone from there represent this, I just think is, like... That's cool. So interesting to me. There's a lot of, like, layers behind it that may not have even been, like, intentional. Yeah. But to me, I was like, oh, that's a really interesting way to play this, for sure. Yeah. I don't know anyone who's gotten their boobs done in, like, your friend groups? Or... Oh, yes. yes. So many. Really? Yeah. Oh, I don't know oh anyone. My gosh. As a photographer, like, I've met so many girls, so, like... Yeah. yeah. Does <laughs> everyone have a boob that's bigger than the other? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I think just the areola, but I don't think I've noticed my titties different. Maybe I just don't look at it like yeah. that. <laughs> her, her going, yeah, right? <laughs> Everyone has one boob that's different, right? I should have known Yeah. the answer after this question. This was the question, the part coming up that mm-hmm. should have said everything. Mm-hmm. True. But yeah, I don't Which know. Which boob is it? My left. My right. My left. Left. My left so one, one left areola is a little left. bigger. Mm. Because your left covers your heart. I think that's why. I might be making that science up, but I think that's why. Because everyone yeah. I've asked, it's the left. Yeah. That's like where I was like, damn. Like in hindsight. That's a good, that is, a, but I have heard that before, that the left is always bigger because it's yeah. over your heart and you have like more blood pumping there. Yeah. So that's a good like tactic for sure. You guys right. have a favorite boob? The left. <laughs> I just recently started loving my boobs, so yeah. I'm paying more attention to them now. To be fair, that sentence made me think her. Oh, yeah. Because she said, I just recently started loving my it's boobs. Like, well, why? And I was like, well, why? Because you got them done? <laughs> I'm not okay. really like back then, so I don't know if I have a favorite yet. <laughs> Do you guys get asked like if they're fake a lot? No. I've never no. gotten asked that. I definitely asked get asked you. in the modeling industry, like getting changed. Like I was like 16, people were like, you're boob sick. I'm like, do I have money to yeah. get a boob job at 16? No, absolutely <laughs> right. not. No, these are mine. I think Janice might be the mole because she said that people have suspected her of having plastic surgery done in the past. So she might have fake boobs. I knew it was never Janice because never. she had some tiger stripes. Mm. And also just to say like we all felt so nervous about being like creepy yeah <laughs> like we like we could have asked people to do a jumping jack but yeah. like we I think we were so worried about yeah making each other feel uncomfortable yeah um so it was even weird like us looking at each other's boobs even though like you're okay it's, it's okay we have we consented to it yeah um but yeah she definitely had some little tiger stripes and I was like no no those are I yeah did 
Did that come up at all? The issue, like stretch marks or anything like that? No. I would totally bring that up. I know. That would have been a good question. Because that's like my, I remember that was like my biggest fear as a kid was like going through puberty and getting stretch marks. Did you? Yeah. Same. I still have tons of stretch marks. It's just like, it always happens. It's like no matter what I'm doing. And I have so much fear and anxiety around it. Um, So anytime I see other women with stretch marks, even like thin women with stretch marks, it makes me feel so much better. Because I've also seen a lot of guys with stretch marks, like on their arms or their back. Yes. That made me feel better too. Yes. It just. It's just. Is. (laughs) It's just a skin thing. Yeah. If you have skin, this is a thing that will happen to it. I'm like, I wish that was what I was taught when I was younger right like they should yeah they should talk about that yeah I was so insecure about it when I was younger so and I think in my experience that people do feel like they can approach you it made me feel like my body wasn't mine Mm -hmm. for many years Mm -hmm. people would make comments or like all of a sudden boys would be really nice to me and then I'm like oh do they actually like me or they want to touch my boobs under the bleachers Mm -hmm. Um. (laughs) Jess was very passionate and I was like she has some booby baggage so that's why I could not vote for her Yes, booby bag is just very real. That was where I started thinking about your style, was when you brought up the feeling that your body isn't yours. Mm. And I was like, I wonder if that's where some of this came from as like building a shield, you know? So that's, I swear that's where it came from. And it wasn't like me just like reading you right away. (laughs) Um, It was truly just like coming off of that. Bonnie's psychic. (laughs) No, we just also have booby baggage. <laughs> We're just lugging our baggage in together. Um, so it made me think about that quite a bit. Um, do you have people, have people like assumed that you've had work done or? Oh my God. I had this lady. I She was drunk. I was at an event and she was like, who did, who, who did your lips? And I was like nobody and she was like don't be like a gatekeeper like tell me who did your lips and she started to get mad and i was like lady if i had them done i would tell you but i like don't and it made me feel really weird because she was like mad about it um i was like i don't know what to say um but other than that i don't think so i mean my i will say naturally and that's why i also get you know i just get nervous about girls getting a lot of stuff done when they're, you know, in their early 20s. Because, like, your face changes a lot. Yes. Like, your fat moves around, your nose. Like, you just kind of settle in, I think, from Mm -hmm. being baby face to having a more womanly face. And it happens later in life. So I wonder, it's like, because, like, I like how it settled. (laughs) Yeah. Like I it's interesting. I feel like I look better now than I did then and it's mm. like had I tried to fix that, maybe it wouldn't have gone well. I don't know. Yeah. There's also this feeling of like your body you never reach like your final form in yeah. a way. Yeah. You know, it's like your body you never and that's what I worry about with like getting stuff done. It's with this idea that, oh, if I get this done or I lose this weight or I work out and I get to this point, I'll reach my final form. And yeah. you never do that. Like your co- your body is constantly evolving. You're going to go through like ebbs and flows. You're going to go through these, you know, different phases with your body and your life. And that's just inevitable for all of us. We all get older and die. Um, <laughs> like... That's just facts. <laughs> and I think that that's what's – that's part of the whole, like, getting work done and wanting to get to this, like, your final form. Mm-hmm. It I, doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. And when you kind of release some of that, of, like, oh, that's – that does not exist. There is no final form for me to get to. And you let some of that go. It's a little bit easier to think, like, in the now – Of, like, what feels good? How do I feel good? How do I make this feel as good as possible today? Definitely. And that's a little freeing. Definitely. Yeah. What did you learn to kind of, like, place a value on growing up? Did your parents talk about body openly? Mm, I think the biggest lesson I've learned um, from my parents and my family is that no one is given a handbook in life mm-hmm. and everyone is just doing 
the best that they can with what they have. Mm. And I think that's something that I think about, like if I become a parent one day or whatever, it's like, I really want to, I don't, it's like, I, you, I don't want to pass certain things mm -hmm. to someone. And that's so much pressure because I feel like it's really easy to, it's like, especially like we were talking about earlier core memories, Yeah, you know, it's like as simple as your parent being like, oh, here's some low fat Cheez-Its. And then you're like, oh my God. I, and then yeah. as a kid, you might be like, oh my God, I always have to eat low fat. It's like, we don't know what will stick. And it's really scary yes. <laughs> to think about. Um, so I think, you know, my parents just like me none of us are perfect mm -hmm. and I think that they tried their best I think that the way I'm wired it makes sense why I went through what I went through and I'm so mm. would I ever want to do it again no <laughs> but I'm so grateful that I went through it because I like who it's made me today yeah. I'm much more compassionate and patient and kind um, I think everyone has to kind of go through something to mm -hmm. get to where they're supposed to be it sucks but it is what it is yeah I think they did their best. <laughs> and yeah. I and they're very supportive. <clears throat> My parents are so supportive of me now. Um, I know that they're really proud of me. And that's the best feeling. But yeah, I mean, growing up, it's like, you don't know, everyone's just doing yeah. their own shit. And, and then it's like also thinking about like nature versus nurture, like what comes from you know, your family can also like do the best they can. Mm -hmm. And then you go in the outside world and it's still yeah, you is no what idea. it is. But they put me in therapy, which is it's the best a, thing they can do. Yeah. You know, amazing if yeah. you're in the industry. Yeah. So yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, even like on the internet, like people yeah. will just say things and it's like chill. I was really nervous about the comments on this video. Mm hmm. And I have been so pleasantly surprised mm -hmm. how kind they are. And the ones that are about boobies, Just... the, the, the comments that are about boobies, like they're funny. Like someone, yeah. someone commented, like, I think it was actually on the Riz video. Uh -huh. They were like, oh, she thinks she's so cool because she has calcium cannons. And like, it was actually hilarious. <laughs> I had never heard that before. <laughs> Oh my god, that's incredible. Like people say things like that and I'm like that's actually hilarious. That's like yeah, I go through phases where I like I hate the internet and then it's things like that where I'm like god, I love the internet so fucking or much. People were saying that I act like Debbie Ryan on the red carpet. <laughs> Kind of Wait, that's hilarious. The, oh my god, you don't. That's also like the <laughs> meanest thing someone could say to someone. I think that's the most offensive thing I've ever heard. I think it's heard. so funny. One time I got oh shit, that funny. I look like um, bloated Megan Fox. <laughs> or which version of Megan Fox? <laughs> like, like, it's not the nicest, but it's objectively hilarious. Oh my god. I think so. <laughs> I do think you look like, like a witchy version of Megan Fox, but I love that. That's a good thing. Holy like shit, that's funny. I was so nervous and like the fact that it's all really kind comments and I think sitting yeah. down with you really helped like mm. my dms went from really weird to like really kind and oh, I'm glad. yeah they like the dms I've been getting are so kind and I think it was because you know the, people weren't just seeing me be unhinged and a goober yeah they got to like no, get yeah. to know my personality a little <laughs> Oh my god, that makes me laugh too much. <laughs> Calcium cannons. Never, I know. I will never get over that. I don't amazing. remember who said it. Some person, but it was amazing. Huh? What? Oh, you want them to go like and subscribe? You heard them. They said, go like and subscribe to this channel if you want more. <laughs> they asked me. I, so I, this wasn't my idea. I can't take credit. Okay. Someone wrote it yeah. in this script or whatever and they were like Jess will you do some like closing lines for us and I was like okay and then they were like how do you feel about these ones and they were like telling me their ideas and I was like yeah I was like this is perfectly unhinged and they were like you're the perfect person to do this and I was like I'm I feel seen yeah I'm honored role. yes yeah, is to is what you pretend my boobs talk um they do they tell me all kinds of great ideas um oh my God. this was the funniest funniest thing it came out amazing and i've seen it on tiktok <laughs> and it's people like going and liking and subscribing and i'm like teamwork <laughs> wait i 
love that. Again, using them Dead. for for good. I was thinking of Jess, something in my subconscious, just like, maybe it's her. My second guess was Ava, and she was still in with the bunch, so I was like, we gotta get her out. Sorry, I'm really suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> Me? Uh, thanks. <laughs> it's a compliment. I mean, this top that I wore today definitely made them push up a little bit more and made them look good a lot more than normal, so maybe that's why. <laughs> I did think it was still her when she got out, and she was like, thank you, I guess. I was like... Yeah, I don't know what it was. Yeah. I think it's also, like, she's so... She looks so fit. Yeah. And so she's muscular. She's definitely, like, a fitness girl. Yeah, so I just assumed, like, well, I feel like a lot of fitness girlies have flatter chests yeah so maybe she got something done and then but... maybe she wanted them like a size where she could still do yeah yeah running workout whatever it is I that you do know. i don't know <laughs> i'm more of an inside person <laughs> Only one person that's willing to keep playing. Two. What made you raise your hands? Because I was like, who is, I was thinking, one, I was thinking, because I never suspected her either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was thinking, who is she thinking? Mm. And then I was like, oh, mm. it's Elizabeth, because that was the third person I was going to vote for because of thinking it could be a Jubilee twist. Also, just her waiting to answer. Yeah. I'm like, maybe it isn't because she's from Norway. Like, maybe. Yeah. That is a classic move. Right? It was yeah. really smart. Um, So then I was like, shoot. And then I, I also, you know, this was my first odd one out. So I. Oh, yeah. So I didn't know. Um, I didn't do any research. I like to go in knowing nothing. Okay. So I was like, oh, we can just keep playing. <laughs> so why yeah. wouldn't we? The box turns green. The five of you have correctly voted the mole out. The box turns red. The mole is still among the five of you. And the mole wins. One. Two. Three. Oh, I knew it. Who's the mole? I knew it. I knew it. So now the mole may step forward and reveal herself. One. Two. I was like, damn it! <laughs> I was legitimately so shocked. I did not know it was her. She she was only my third guess because of that comment she made. Yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't have suspected. No idea. No. Oh my god! <laughs> Thank you, thank you. That's, that's why I, I would, raised my hand. Yeah, no, that's why I raised it. I was baffled. I was bamboozled. Trust issues. I love her. Why did I, I not ask her if she was wearing a bra? Why didn't I ask her to jump? <laughs> oh, I wish some of us raised our hands more. It's not really having big hoops at all. When I first hit puberty, I was like 11 or 12. My mom told me they would grow, just wait till you get older. It never happened. I never developed them at all. Like my stomach and boobs were the same when I was 20. And I just wanted to get my boobs done because I wanted to feel more confident. And I never was insecure about it, like to the point where I got bullied about it and stuff. I just, to me, I wanted to feel, I feel more feminine to me, which is kind of curvy and like balanced my body out more. And I haven't regretted it ever since. Yeah. Well, they look great, girl. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for no. real. Yeah. Quad. I think it's important to feel comfortable with who you are. If that is doing a surgery, then you should do it if you know it's for yourself and not because everyone else wants it to. I think that's also very important. Mm. I got a BBL, so period, girl. You do that. <laughs> and if I, have one, I do it too. So, no boobies, but it has a BBL. Yeah, yeah if you want to get boobies, come join the Big Titty Committee. But I'll warn you. Running is gonna not be so easy anymore. <laughs> yup. <laughs> I love this, the like whip sound. When he's like, <laughs> I do love that she was the mole and that it was like, it's not like she was bullied. It's not like it was any big trauma. That surprised me too. Yeah, like it's not like it wasn't based in any sort of like big crazy thing. It was just like, no, I wanted it. Which I love. I love that. And it was for herself. Yeah. Which is, you know, like, yeah. do you. I think that goes back to that like intention of like, you know, what's who are you doing it for mm -hmm. and why? 
And even if it is for you, like, is there any other, like, underlying weirdness? But, like, I like that she's just so kind of, like, casual about it. I know. You know? I she's just like, yeah, that. I did it. And it's not, like, covering up some, like, deep secret or trauma or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because she said, she was like, I never was bullied mm-hmm. as a kid, which is interesting. Yeah. And she waited till she was, like, in her 20s, it sounds like. Yeah. So. What did you learn from this experience, Jess? I just, like, my heart feels really full because mm-hmm. I love being able to sit down with you and taking something that is so lighthearted and fun and kind of showing the flip side of things that people might not expect. Yeah. Like it just feels really cool. And like if that helps someone like even like one person yeah. feel better, like that's so beautiful. Yeah. So I learned a lot. I mean, I and I, I, I guess I didn't realize how much booby package I <laughs> sorry <laughs> like I maybe that's what kind of pushed me to get to this video you yeah. know because I was just like oh yeah well, let's talk about it yeah which is like really cool I love that. <laughs> do your boobs have anything to say as we wrap up thanks for chatting buddy <laughs> like and subscribe to I this don't, too I don't like that I hate you I don't like that I did that did I, I feel don't, gross I, yeah I really hated that actually I really did not like why'd you make us do I that buddy <laughs> have names no oh do yours yeah mary kate and ashley and on that note <laughs> thank you like for joining us <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. oh boy thanks for watching guys like and subscribe listen to the cannons <laughs> listen to the cannons <laughs>